Hello goddesses. So I wanted to just say a little bit more because this week uh, we had pulled um, Saraswati as the goddess energy to embody. And so um, if you saw my reading for this week, now you might be watching this later too and that's fine. I'll just say a little bit about Saraswati. This is the image on the Doreen Virtue card and it does leave off a few things. So this is a Hindu goddess and because I want to make that clear. You know, in terms just in terms of um, cultural appropriation, I do believe though that this goddess energy, she's about creativity in all cultures and through all times. That energy exists. This is simply a uh, sort of a visual representation of that energy, of that divine energy. So she's shown with a musical instrument. I believe it's called a vena, and she's always shown with swans. Which is interesting because I used to do art with uh, swans just because I had no idea, um, this was before my interest uh, sort of blossomed in, uh, into Eastern thought and Eastern spirituality, but I would do swans all the time. And so that's one of her symbols. And of course her foot is on a lotus. The lotus always, especially in India, is connected with the goddess. She's also typically shown uh, with a book as well because she has to do with learning. So. She's also usually shown holding mala beads, which are the prayer beads that you say a mantra on. So anyway, just a little bit about her, and then I'm going to just repeat her mantra. Okay, so Saraswati in India, mothers, typically would be the mothers, but any family member or the child will do her mantra to help their um, child do well in school. So she very much has to do also with memory, with remembering you know, and storing information, but very much also with creativity, writing, music, the arts, and so on, but learning, and even and spiritual learning. So I'm going to read you a little bit of what Thomas Ashley Ferran says in his book, Healing Mantras. Okay, and so, um, yeah, spiritual teachers chant Saraswati, Japa, Japa means repetition of mantra, they chanted to obtain the capacity to hold the highest wisdom. So a lot of spiritual teachers in India, they will work with the goddess Saraswati. Um, this way, teachers, whether spiritual teachers or like school teachers, they actually, um, she's the goddess that they work with. Uh, so whether secular or spiritual, they chant Saraswati to ensure that the words coming out of their mouths contain the truth and the correct principles desired. I think very much in India, there's a lot of this, like oral learning, like learning is spoken and there's a lot of spoken repetition. And I know if one is learning any uh, chants, it's, it, they're very precise about it being chanted correctly and so on. So there's a real strong oral tradition, like in many other cultures historically. Uh, writing is great, but also the being able to repeat correctly is very important. Um, so her power is a little bit less talked about than certainly Lakshmi, <laughs> which is the goddess of abundance, and even Durga, which has to do with power and protection and so on. And um, Thomas Ashley Ferran says it's almost, be she's almost kept secret in a certain way, that it says it may be that the most knowledgeable spiritual teachers from the Far East want to keep, quote, true spiritual knowledge secret, and that Saraswati is the path to that knowledge. Um, she has to do with the word, with literally the original sounds and that evoke a certain thing. Um, she has to do with the power of mantras. Okay. So the Saraswati energy, according to ancient scriptures, governs all spiritual pursuits. It gives mantras their power. Okay. Spiritual teachers and gurus transmit the power of mantra through the Saraswati energy. Rulers, oh, rule followers of the path of intellectual understanding and mind. Sorry, rules followers of the path of intellectual understanding and mind. So again, this is why students often will worship Saraswati. Governs the transmission of a powerful Shakti. Shakti means energy of transformation. That's a little bit less well known. So she actually has to do with the power of transformation and change. Um, and this is as recorded by many famous teachers such as Yogananda and Ramakrishna. And uh, Saraswati is also adopted by many Himalayan adepts and swamis as part of their spiritual name. Because again, it's that she, she allows them to learn and understand spiritual truth. So, we're going to chant her mantra and he says, 
This is the mantra for success in education, in music, and artistic endeavors. Okay? It's Om, I am Saraswati Namaha. Actually, he does Swaha. I'm going to do Namaha. Um, the ending has to do with how old you are. So I'm going to do uh, Swaha, and then I'll do the Namaha. Okay. Om, I am Saraswati Namaha. Om I'm Saraswati Namaha Om I'm Saraswati Namaha And it means I honor the goddess Saraswati. So the swaha, it would just sound like Om I'm Saraswati Swaha. Okay, so this goes, uh, this you need, <laughs> you would need really, really deep research and I would say with uh, someone who is a Vedic scholar and spiritual teacher. But Thomas Ashley Ferrand likes to use the Swaha ending and he says it's a feminine ending. It means I offer to the highest realms. And again, depending on the mantra, but he says for general purposes, Swaha is used as a mantra ending if you were 29 years of age or older, except when otherwise indicated by the explanations for certain mantras in this book. So he does the Saraswati with the Swaha. But uh, generally, um, I have seen it done commonly with the Namaha. So Om Aim Saraswati Namaha is also perfectly fine. So I hope this was helpful. And um, the information, I, I hesitate to hold this book up. Like I said, it's like so old. I think it just also, um, I think the cover, the printing wasn't like the highest quality, but you can see it's like yellow. He has, um, this is Swami Vishnu Devananda, and he is the one who started the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta Centers, and they're all over the world. And this one that also has a little bit about Saraswati is the Healing Mantras. This book, interestingly, her name is Kala, Kala Trobe. I'm not sure how that's how she says her last name. Invoke the goddess Greek and Egyptian deities. She actually has a whole chapter on Saraswati. So you might want to check this out. And the final one that's really quite good and gives a lot of information, hold on. Okay, and an excellent book um, that I did a review. I might not have posted it yet, but you can check this out on Amazon and my link will be below. It'll be an affiliate link, like I said. Um, so I think I get like 50 cents if you buy the book or something. But this one's called Awakening Shakti. And so it's got a really beautiful cover. It's by Sally Kempton. She's very respected. And I think she was actually a Vedic. I mean, they called her a monk. They didn't say none. She was a Vedic monk for some years. And she's probably in her 60s at this point. And the transformative power of the goddesses of yoga. Um, and so this one is also quite good and gives a lot of information on the various... Um, goddesses from the Hindu pantheon. Um, I just want to end by saying that there are a lot of cultures, many, many cultures, of course, if you're watching this, you may know that had, if they had a god, they had a goddess because they believe that that duality was necessary and some cultures, they just had a goddess. So while these goddesses, as they've come to us in daily life through a lot through the Hindu pantheon, there are other cultures in the world where they have, you know, South America and Africa, um, and even parts of Europe that are still in touch with like their more early roots, they had goddesses that would have to do with creativity and the arts, just like Saraswati. So this energy, this principle, I believe is universal, right? Coming from the divine. It's just, it's almost a way to, um, it's, it's like a manifestation of that energy that is in fact universal. Uh, universal create, creative energy that flows through artists, writers, and so on. And so all the different aspects of the divine are sort of like little facets of the greater divine energy. So I'm just going to chant the mantra uh, to close. If you'd like to just listen or chant along. Om Aim Saraswati Namaha Om Aim Saraswati Namaha Om Aim Saraswati Namaha Om
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. First Shanti is for peace with ourselves, the second Shanti is for peace with others, and the third Shanti is for peace with the forces around us. Namaste. This is the goddess Mat, and Sri Lalita, and all artwork is for sale. <laughs>